guys, welcome back to Lisa Loves. Um, today I'm going to do a February favourites. Um, I'm a bit late in doing this. Um, February's been a bit of a hectic month for me. Um, just a bit, a bit of background for anyone that doesn't know. Um, my blog has, uh, my vlog has everything in there as well as what's going on in my life. So last this month, last month, February. Um, my mum, she has MS and. She took a really bad turn for the worst um, in February and had to be admitted to hospital on her anniversary of all days. Um, 15th of Feb, so she uh, was in hospital for just over two weeks. And finally she's back home, um, but she's lost total use of her legs now, so is completely bed bound. Um, she's in a downstairs room with um, hospital bed, massive hoist, all that sort of thing. Uh, and it's just been manic, um, going up to hospital every day for visiting, getting everything in place at home. My dad's not a fan of dealing with social workers and carers and things and would have the wool pulled over his eyes very easily. Um, wouldn't persist and wouldn't push for things that he should be getting and is entitled to. So um, we've been dealing with that quite a lot for the last month. So because of that, I haven't really watched as much as normal, haven't read hardly at all. I set myself um, a challenge at the beginning of the year to start to read more because I hadn't been reading barely at all. And I've failed dismally thus far. Um, I've only read three books this year so far, which I suppose it, it's on on target. I set myself a target of 12 books in a year which I know is is barely anything but for someone that doesn't read a lot and doesn't get a lot of time to read it's um it's something I wanted to surpass put it that way but um I'll let you know what I've been watching what I've been reading what I've been listening to anyway um I've written some of it down just to remind myself I'm going to start with movies at the cinema now this will probably be quite dull for most of you um that don't have kids um or don't watch kiddies movies um, myself and my husband used to go to the cinema a lot. We'd see three to four movies a week at the cinema. We had the loyalty cards, but now that we've got Isaac um, for the past few years, we don't have a babysitter due to my family's health. And um, we don't get to go to the cinema together to watch adult movies. Uh, I would go occasionally on my own at night, but um, haven't in quite a while. So anything we see in the cinema is generally kiddies movies. In February, the only ones I can think of off the top of my head that we saw were Coco for the second time for Isaac's birthday, which is a stunning, stunning animation. It's my favourite um, animation, Pixar animation, after Toy Story. I say after Toy Story, meaning since Toy Story, but I think I actually prefer it to Toy Story, but it's a very close run thing for me. Um, I can't say enough good things about this, even if you're an adult, even if you don't have kids, watch it. I know um, three couples that don't have kids and all three of those couples absolutely adored the movie, so don't let it put you off that it's a kids movie. Also watched Black Panther, which um, was okay, it's just a typical Marvel movie. It was a good movie, it was more story based, I felt, than action, which for me is a good thing. Um, I would have liked a little bit more... I don't know, just a little bit more background on the character, but m maybe that's just me. I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert in all things Marvel and comic based, but yeah, it's worth seeing. It's a good movie. Um, Tad the Explorer, which is a, another kids movie. It's cartoon Indiana Jones. It's the only way I can put it. It's worth a watch. It's quite good. Um, did I watch anything else at the cinema? Oh, Monster Family last week, which is another kiddies animation. Would be really good for kids around Halloween, typical um, Halloween kitty movie, but it's not something I would say that would appeal to adults that weren't going with kids. But yeah, it's, it's okay, it's worth a watch. <clears throat> I've just realised I do this a lot, don't I? Um, movies that I've watched on either DVD or Netflix. I only actually got Netflix for the first time in December of last year, which is ridiculous, I know, but... Um, I've been told that um, the US version of Netflix has got an awful lot more cool stuff on there, more content than the UK version, but I've been like, trips on my way through the films and documentaries and stuff. 
I'm a big fan of um, crime documentaries of any description. So I've watched, I think I've watched pretty much every crime documentary I can find on there. Um, trying to think of any that stand out. The Confessions um, series really stand out as to people that have been convicted and incarcerated in prison that are innocent and how they were convinced to confess and, and the techniques used. It was a really interesting story. And then I've watched some just typical medical detective forensic shows, um, frenemies, partners in crime, just loads and loads. Anyway, I wasn't even going to talk about that. Movies that I've watched in the last month on Netflix. I'm just going to run down a really quick list and then tell you which ones to me are worth watching. So what I've watched is The Awakening, uh, Wickwood, Veronica, San Andreas, Before I Fall, Side Effects, Nails, Passengers, It's Kind of a Funny Story, The Cloverfield Paradox, The Loft, The Do-Over, Alien Abduction, and there was one that come to mind that I haven't written down. What is it? It's the one that's advertised at the moment on Netflix. It's a rom-com where the only way I can describe it is almost like a Groundhog Day kind of thing where this guy wants to end up with the girl he's been in love with his entire life and he keeps getting the chance to go back and change how things I haven't added that one and I've forgotten what it's called I'm sure you'll know which one I mean anyway from that list um, The Awakening is uh, like a ghosty supernatural tale set in Cumbria um, it's a 2012 movie and I really enjoyed it it's it's a basic story of a ghost for want of a better word debunker someone that doesn't believe in the supernatural in ghosts and makes it her life's work and job to prove they do not exist. As you can imagine, this story is the contrary. It's proven to her that yes, they do exist. It's quite a creepy atmospheric movie. It's set a long time ago. Um, it's not modern day, so I found it really interesting. I think it's worth checking out. Um, another one, Wakewood. It's a 2009 movie. It's... Um, I think it was the Irish Film Board did this one. It's got Timothy Spallin, the UK actor that's been in so many good movies. Also, A Food is in Pet. Obviously, everyone will remember him from there. Everyone in the UK, anyway. Um, and it had um, Damien did Daniel. He played um, Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. I've probably got it written down. Aidan Gillen. I don't know where I'm getting Daniel from. Um, it's about a couple who live in a town called Wakewood. I was going to say Wormwood. <laughs> um, and the town's a bit strange, strange oldie English town where anyone that loses a family member can perform this very strange ritual with the rest of the town and bring them back for three days. Um, and then they owe a debt of gratitude to the town. They're never allowed to leave. They must serve the town for the rest of their life. The main couple lose their little girl. Um, that's not giving away a plot. It's uh, it's on the blurb on the back of the DVD on Netflix. It's not the storyline. So they decide they want to bring her back. Which to me, I don't know about anyone out there that's a parent, but if you went through the pain of losing a child, which I, I can't even begin to imagine, would you want to live through that again to have them back for three days? Would you potentially want to put them through their death again? Um, it just was a strange concept to me. I can't even begin to imagine wanting to do that. But it was it was a good movie. It was well worth a watch. It was different. Um, not going to say Pet cemetery like but uh, yeah, yeah, it's worth a watch. It was interesting. If you can hear creaking, I'm sat on a little footstool and it wobbles. So that's what it is. Um, what other ones? San Andreas is just a typical take you back to days of Tower and Inferno and Poseidon Adventure. Typical um, disaster movie. It's about an earthquake. It's got The Rock, which is probably the only reason I watched it. He's very easy on the eye, as my mother would agree. It was okay. It, it's just one of those easy to watch, sit down, put your feet up, no concentration required movie. Uh, the others, Before I Fall, Side Effects, Nails, Nah, 
passengers. That one was okay. It was about a um, air disaster and a psychologist that is tasked with speaking to all the survivors of the air disaster to help them cope and strange things are afoot. I'll not say anymore. It's okay. It's worth a watch. It's kind of a funny story. It was quite a good one. It is like a comedy slash drama about a young teenager who is suicidal and depressed and checks himself into a mental institution and it's about his experiences over that week and the friendships he makes while there. Um, it's just a nice little movie. Just a really nice little... I don't know if feel good's the right word to use, but it's a, it's a movie I enjoyed. The Cloverfield Paradox. If you've seen Cloverfield and um, Cloverfield Lane, I want to say, is it called? You'll know what to expect. I'm not saying it's the same storyline, it isn't, but if you enjoyed those, you'll enjoy this. It's much in the same vein. So I would recommend it. I enjoyed it. There were a couple of bits that were like, you have to suspend belief, but it, it was worth a watch. I liked it, especially the ending. The Loft. I'd say, yeah, if you've got an hour and a half, sit down and watch it. It's not too bad. It's not fantastic. It's not awful. It has got the guy from Modern Family, you know, the big guy from the farming background, the part of the gay couple, and I can't remember his name. Nope, it's not common to me. Anyway, he plays a very serious role in this, and he's a very different individual, like a chauvinistic, womanising, disrespectful. He's just so different in this movie. It, it was interesting to see. That's why I watched it. I do really like Modern Family, and... Um, I do really like him as an actor, so. Um, what else? The Day Over? Don't waste your time. Adam Sandler. I really love old Adam Sandler movies like Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, The Wedding Singer, Airheads. Most of what he has done since, there probably are exceptions to this, but most of what he's done since I haven't enjoyed. Um, he did one called The Cobbler not that long ago, which is more of a serious movie, which I did enjoy. And I know there's one on Netflix, which um, my friend Chris rates from Two Vloggers More, called is it The Merowitz Stories? I think I still have to check that one out. I think that text should be in the right mood, which I haven't been in yet. Um, and the last one I've got written down here is Alien Abduction, which is exactly what it says on the tin, Alien Abduction. Uh, average okay find footage which is the type of film you can just poke holes in from beginning to end it's like well that wouldn't happen this wouldn't happen why this why that but mm. and you know those movies where it shows the thing for too long and it shouldn't really you should just have a very quick glimpse I feel it shows things for too long in this movie Um, that as far as I can see are all the movies I watched last month there are probably more but these are the ones that um spring to mind at the moment. Um, also two vloggers more um, I watch religiously. It's uh, friends of mine Chris and Victoria and their vlog is just a slice of their life. It's got a bit of everything. It's got um, hauls, it's got movie reviews, book reviews, they talk about their favourites every month. They, um, they're avid readers so they get through a lot of books, a lot of graphic novels, a lot of comics. Um, if you like those they're well worth checking out. Uh, they have started a new weekly vlog, which they do, just um, documenting their week and what they've done. It's got, you know, they do questions and answers. They're planning a trip to Disney. They're big Disney fans, so they'll be doing planning videos. When they're there, they'll no doubt do um, vlogs of their trip. It's they're just a really nice couple and, you know, really nice people to check out. I've got into quite a few horror channels um, in the last few weeks. There's... There's too many to mention. Um, I'm not going to try it. I can think of a few, but I don't want to leave someone out, so I'm not going to. But for this month, my two tips, two vloggers more and the 80s, the new 80s revolution. Both vlogs you should check out. So anyway, I was talking about TV. Apart from vlogs, this month I've been watching... Um, hmm, uh, some shows that I never miss. Ink Master. Big Tattoo fan. Have not missed one episode of this show. Um, Shonda Rhimes programs. Grey's Anatomy. How to Get Away with Murder. Scandal. Never miss any of them. Love them. Big Bang started again and they've now released Young Sheldon, which I'm watching. It's just one of those feel-good, 
sit down, put your feet up, don't think, don't concentrate, be entertained. So I enjoy that. It's just easy watching. I was watching iZombie for quite a while. Um, I think I've watched nearly three seasons and I'm, it's getting a bit samey. Maybe I just watched too much too quickly. So I haven't went back to that in a while. I think on telly that's all I really have been watching, aside from just documentaries. I watch quite a bit. But I think in TV I'll give I'll give the rest there. That's music. Um I'm usually a big listener to music, but again, this month has been so busy, so hectic. I've been listening mainly to it's just stuff that's on my iPhone. So um a lot of backyard babies. Obviously anyone that knows me knows it's my favourite band. Um, after we lost Freddie, of course, from Queen. Um, and the singer of Backyard Babies, Nicky Borg, um, has released his own album, which um, is called... Oh dear, Lisa. Is it Homeland? Um, yeah, Homeland, chapters one and two. Um, it's just an awesome album. It's, uh, it's quite country-inspired, but obviously rocky as well, but it's a lot more mellow and chill than normal Backyard Babies stuff. So I've been listening to him an awful lot. I'm a big fan of him. Anything they do. And I just love love his album. Um, music wise, I think that's it really for the past month. It's not very eclectic, I realise, but that's it. I think I'll put that down. I don't need that anymore. Um, I'll end on books. I'm ashamed of myself. I was meant to read lots of books. I haven't. I'm a disgrace. I finished a book called My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. Um, Chris recommended this. I started it and I was quite... Um, I didn't know if it was something I was going to enjoy. I decided to stick to it because I started so I'll finish, that sort of thing. Um, I did at the beginning feel that the... That thing where the author describes areas, vegetation, surroundings in minute detail, um, it kind of put me off a bit. But when, when I stuck with the book for a period of time, I got used to that. I got used to why he was doing it. It went well with the style of the book. Um, and the only complaint really I have about the book is the occasional, and it is occasional, use of certain language. Um, I'm not opposed to bad language by any stretch of the imagination, but sometimes I think particular words aren't suiting to be used in certain contexts. And in this case, and I know Chris has said he agrees, um, in this case, only in a couple of instances, I think better use of words could have been used. Anyway, I'm not going to say about what just I don't want to spoil things but it is a really really good book it is incredibly well written um, it is about a young girl just on the cusp of being a teenager um, called Turtle is her, her dad calls her Turtle and it's about her life and she is just such a strong unique ballsy just fantastic young female character it's just a shame. The subject matter of the book is not something that a young girl probably should be reading, but she is such an inspirational character for young women. Um, just she, what she deals with, what she tolerates. She has a very abusive relationship with her father. Um, there's the, just the entire story. I don't want to go into detail and say what happens, what goes on, but it is incredibly impressive powerful um, writing and I am quite willing to admit I was wrong. When I started it I did feel no I'm not gonna like this but when I stuck to it I did very much so. <clears throat> I would really recommend if you do read a lot um, if you don't mind giving up a month or so of your time to a book have a go at this one it is really really well worth a read. Besides that one um, I think it was January I finished my Sean Hudson book, but I um, have started reading and I've actually got it here. Again, I'm ashamed of myself. I should have finished this by now. I started reading this one, which I talked about last in another vlog. I can't remember what vlog. 
I am still on, I'm sorry Chris, page 112. Um, this is actually by um, Chris from Two Vloggers More. It is a um, selection of short stories called Shards, with each story being a different shard, I would imagine. Um, and it is really, really good. I like short stories because when you don't often get a long period of time to yourself to sit down to do something, being able to pick up short stories and put them down again is, is a really easy way to read. So I'd say if you're a busy person, if um, you're at work and don't get much time, whatever the reason may be, if you don't feel you've got enough time to dedicate to reading, something like this one is well worth a read. Um, I'll just show you there in case anyone <clears throat> is forgetful and doesn't know who Chris is. Um, I meant to buy this when it first came out and I completely just, I don't know why it surpassed me, why I haven't, but it, I've bought it now. I'm halfway through and I'm really enjoying it, Chris. I don't want to say too much because I want to do a separate blog just um, as a review of this book, but I will say from what I've read so far, it's going to be a very positive review. Uh, I just, I've really enjoyed what I've read so far and little things I, I think I've picked up. Um, I'm not even going to, I will talk about it in the next vlog. So yeah, shards. Um, I will do a vlog in future about that one and let you know what I felt and just go through it in a bit more detail. So, um, that's it for this month. I will be back with my March update, March favourites. Hopefully you've en enjoyed and find something in there of use or of interest. Um, a like would be really cool, a comment would be even cooler. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you subscribed. I'm trying to get the old numbers up. Um, I will say future vlogs planned include going through more DVDs, um, talking about those. I am planning something called a film or author hop, which is uh, an idea I got from a vlogger called Amy McLean. I am hope I pronounced that right. Amy is Amy McLean. Um, she's Irish. Um, she her channel I will link the details below Amy McLean author and film vlogger and the concept is that you take you'll have heard this concept with regards to linking actors from different movies but the concept for this is you take an actor from a specific movie we'll just say I'll use for example Brad Pitt and you review that a movie that he's in and then you'll take someone from that movie and review another movie that that person's in and so on. So you're reviewing, say, three different movies across different genres with different actors that can be linked by being in different movies. If does that, Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, just go over to Amy's um, vlog and she's done quite a few. Have a look and you'll see exactly what I mean. She's kindly said, yeah, you can steal the idea, you can use it. So I'm going to. Thanks, Amy. Um, so I'm going to do that because films is probably my top interest. So as I said before, thanks for watching. Catch up with you again in the next vlog. Over and out from Lisa Loves.